fourth edition of For the Quantum Wear Machine Podcast, the only podcast of its kind on the interwebs. I'm your host, Colin Jason, hyphen Matthew Colin Glass. You may call me Jason. This is a podcast of opinion, mostly dealing with my experiences in uh, positions regarding correct sentence structure, how it applies to my own personal history and life and other issues, so on and so forth, for educational and entertainment purposes only. Uh, What we're going to talk about this week is, well, I'm going to share with you a situation that is new to me that I ran into uh, during one of my recent consultations. Now, if you are a viewer of my YouTube channel, then you've heard heard me say ad nauseum the way the consultations work. If you're interested in applying for a correct grammar workshop, you may email me at jasonmatthewg17 at gmail.com, in which case I will then offer you a 10 to 15 minute video consultation, confidential, and the platform that I use is Zoom. It's the venue. It's the trade medium between the two of us. I've been using Zoom since 2018. I stopped using Skype. I just use Zoom. I actually pay for it. And that's the venue. Now, here's the thing about contract and offer and acceptance. If you came to me and you emailed me, then that means you want something from me. So therefore, if you want to proceed to board my vessel and attain my service that I offer, you must agree to my terms and conditions. You do not impose your terms and conditions upon my vessel. The first thing that I establish is a geometric level playing field of communication where you know who I am, you can see me, you know what I look like, you know my correct name. I'm just simply asking the same consideration of you. And that has been all well and fine for the last five years. Never had a problem with anyone doing that. And also, not only is it part an important part of the vetting process, okay? Because in this, on this earth, I would have to say that someone, based upon the experiences I've had, if someone just accepts someone's word, someone at their word without knowing them, knowing what they look like or anything like that, then that's probably a very foolish choice to make. That is why this is a very strict vetting process for me. It's for the safety of everyone involved. That's why. If you're willing to step into the light, I'm here waiting for you on the geometric level field of contract, and then we can move forward. And it is very important that I can see you, your face, your expressions, especially if we're going to be doing workshops. Because, I don't know, maybe your experience in school, you always run into that you know, a scenario where the teacher is teaching the student and the teacher says, okay, did everybody get that? And you have the one student that's sitting there literally in their mind saying, I have no idea what the teacher's talking about, but their lips are saying, yeah, I get it. The teacher can see in the student's face that they don't get it, even though the student is saying, yeah, yeah, we get it. Their head's shaking up and down, yes, but you can see in their eyes that it means no. A teacher must be able to evaluate those types of things. That's why the video is very important. So I'm giving this backstory on terms and conditions and teaching and things like that to bring me to the scenario that I had never experienced in five years of doing this. In that, I had a consultation with an individual who refused to comply with my terms and conditions of turning their video on. And they made the statement that If it were just they and I, then they would have no problem with turning the video on. But then I thought about that, you know, a little bit later. I thought uh, in hindsight, how could it ever be them and me if unless we were in person? There's always going to have to be some kind of platform or trade medium giving video, whether that's a phone, Zoom, Google, whatever it is, Facebook, Uh, Skype, 
WhatsApp, Telegram. There's always a platform there to use for video. So I'm not sure what they meant by if we were face to face, because I'm pretty sure whoever this individual was, that they were probably a very great distance away. So I'm not sure how that logic would work. There would have to be some sort of platform involved. So then, of course, I said, well, the terms and conditions of this vessel are such that you see me, you know who I am. I ask the same uh, consideration from you so that I can see you and credential you. And they were kind of like, well, why do you need to do that? Why is that necessary to see who I am? And I explained to them, you know, that's, they, they said, why can't you just take my word for it? Well, as I explained earlier, in this day and age, and from my experience, there is no taking someone's word for it. And then I also explained to them that you, meaning them, contacted me. You requested to come aboard my vessel. Therefore, you must agree to my terms and conditions. No one twisted your arm to email me. You came to me. If you want to be taught by me, these are the terms and conditions under which I will teach you. And if you don't want to step into the light, step up onto the geometric level playing field of contract communication, then we cannot move forward here. And then they proceeded to make the comment to me that, to continue, that they would have no problem doing that. They just don't want to show their face to Zoom, a third party. And then I made my best attempt at explaining to them that no matter where you go, what you do, uh, these things, these third-party uh, contractors or platforms or venues are going to see your face. Um, whether you have your camera turned on or not, these things will happen, and it's probably being sent to a cloud somewhere. Myself, I'm well aware of these things. I have nothing to hide, so I have no problem using these platforms uh, to do what I do. I do make sure to say confidential or that this is confidential or that is confidential because I know the implications of what that does. And, you know, with relation to honor, grace, peace, neutrality, rule one, rule equal. But it didn't matter because this individual was very firm and obstinate in their position that they were in no way, shape or form going to turn on their video. So I then asked them, well, is there any other way you can credential yourself to me? Any other thing that you could do, platform you could use, something to credential yourself? And they were pretty much at a loss that no, no, that they, they didn't want to do that. They weren't going to show their face on the internet. They wanted to maintain their, uh, their privacy, so on and so forth. Which again, in hindsight, was interesting to me because you can, voice recognition is way more accurate than, than facial recognition, to my understanding. So if you're going to be using your voice, and you can walk down the street, be on your phone, whatever it is, and you, if there's a voice recognition device next to you somewhere, they can credential you anyways, if that's what you're worried about. If you're worried about, quote unquote, big brother spying on you or whatever, if that's what is worrying you, I mean, it's happening every day, all day. Doesn't make it right. Doesn't make it wrong. Doesn't make it correct. It just is what it is. And I've been dealing with these things for five years, never had a problem. You know, as I explained to the individual, when I first came out into the public showing my face and my name, it was very scary. To do that, to come out of the shadows and come into the public, into the light and put my quote unquote money where my mouth is. But once I did it, I had zero difficulty, zero problems. Everything was easily surmountable. But no matter what I said, this person was very obstinate in their position. So I said, well, then that means I have to break bulk because you know, violating my terms and conditions. Uh, if you want to remain aboard these ve this vessel, this is what you have to do. And if you're not willing to do that, well, then that's okay because contract is by consent, by permission, 
And then uh, if you're not going to comply, well, then you're no longer permitted to be aboard this vessel. And that's that. And that was, uh, that was the end of it. Thinking back in hindsight, because as we all know, hindsight is 2020. Thinking about the, the psychology of this individual, and I do hope they're listening to this podcast. The psychology is such that, you know, if you go deeper into it, them saying that specifically that they don't want the internet to see their face. Well, if you or I or this individual or anybody walk outside their door and go any place public, which, you know, like a grocery store, uh, a, D, a DMV, well, I mean, they're not really public places, but I mean, it's out in the public, so to speak. And then you walk into these vessels, which may or may not be public. They may be public and private or one or the other or a mix. Jer. I mean, I know the public and private can't mix. But if you look at the legality of things, you will see it's very convoluted. And those in the know will know what I'm talking about. But it's fiction, so who gives a crap anyways? So when you walk into these places, there are cameras everywhere. Even if you're just walking down the sidewalk, people have cameras on their houses. Stores have cameras if you're walking down the street. If you're driving a new car, chances are that car has a camera filming you or filming the outside of the car or both wherever you go there is surveillance okay you are being filmed your face is being taken you know captured so to speak and stored in a cloud somewhere the same cloud that if zoom were recording you would be storing your face or your likeness So it really, you know, the more I think about it, it really, I don't know if it's some sort of archaic uh, obstinacy that psychological condition of state that caused this person to be so adamant in their position. And I would have to guess that they haven't watched very many videos where I do explain the terms and conditions of the consultation that we must have the geometric level playing field. Otherwise, we won't be contracting. I don't know what they thought was going to happen when, uh, if they were aware of that when they attempted to board my vessel. But as I said, you know, you walk down the street, you're being filmed. You know, people are doing TikToks or Snapchats or Instagram stories and they're filming. You're going to be caught in someone's video and be uploaded to the internet without your permission. And now your face is out there. Or your voice, even if it's recording. Someone's recording something in a store on a Snapchat or whatever, and you're talking in the next dial. They'll be able to recognize your voice. And with the technology we have, they'll be able to put your face with the voice, most likely. So the more I think about it, the more it does not make logical sense, this this individual's reasoning. Outside of the fact that that's just a term and condition that they had for themselves. And they aren't going to break it for anybody. No matter what logic you throw at them, no no matter what, it's just a rule that they have that they're not going to break. Like, for example, if I had a rule for myself where if I step outside of my, my house, I am always going to wear a hat. Doesn't matter where I go, I'm going to wear a hat. If I walk into your house and you have a rule where you have to take your hat off, I'm not going to do it. Well, then I guess that means I'm not coming into your house then because I'm not going to take my hat off. It's like, well, why wouldn't you take your hat off? You know, it's rude, first of all, not to take your hat off. And it's hot in here. I don't want you to take your hat. I, I, I want you to take your hat off. You can just leave it outside and put it back on when you get out. I say, well, no. No, I'm not going to take my hat off. It's just what I do. I've been doing it for years. You know, it's something sort of like that. It's just, it's a very, uh, I, I understand where someone can become very set in their ways, like very set in their ways to the point where any type of new nuance or 
or adjustment to be made is very difficult for them. I myself am no stranger to this uh, in certain aspects, as I'm sure people who know me can probably tell you. However, I am open to things, and for honor and grace, I do make concessions. In this instance, it just wasn't a possibility. Number one, because I'd never been confronted with that issue with that issue before. And number two, because even in the in the instance in the now space when it was happening, it made no logical sense to me. It didn't. It made no logical sense to me that this individual was refusing to turn their camera on, yet they had contacted me. Like it just makes me wonder what did they think what did they think would happen if they're aware of those terms and conditions of rule one, rule equal, or perhaps they don't uh, quite understand what rule one, rule equal is. I don't know. And again, as far as Zoom, seeing them, well, cameras probably, unless they live somewhere in the middle of nowhere where there are no cameras, no surveillance, no traffic lights, no people with cell phones, then I don't see how, yeah, it just, <laughs> it boggles my mind. It really does. It really does. And I guess that's a psychological uh, issue with confidentiality. I always say if I'm, if I'm sending a voice message, I always say confidential before I begin speaking. If I send an email, I usually say or write colon confidential somewhere in there, especially in the title or subject line of the email. Everything is in the confidential. Now, where it goes from there is not up to me. What I have done is just put my authority there my because I'm the author of the email or the author of the, the verbal message. That that's my terms and conditions. Confidentiality. If you, as a third party, are going to violate that, then that's a whole new set of things for you. That's going to impact you more than me. Because even though I do say confidential or write confidential, I'm not doing anything that's going to cause anyone any grief or trouble if it were to be, to be made public. It's just not. I don't put myself in those situations. Purposely. I'm very careful. So, again, you know, individuals who feel this way, I guess that type of, I'd have to have that better explained to me in the context of how they live their life all overall. It's very interesting. You learn something new every day. I am no uh, different. I'm learning stuff all the time. I look at, at life as a big school of learning. That's how I like to look at it. And I'm definitely open-minded. And if I come to someone and I want something from them, if I reach out to someone and contact someone and, and want a service or, or something from them, I necessarily will, I will agree to their terms and conditions if I really want the service that they're providing. I'm not going to try and come on and impose myself on them. Although if it is something important like this, you know, I may ask and it'd be, you know, is it okay if I don't turn my video on? Because I, I don't want to, because I don't want Zoom to see me. And any other individual may say, well, yeah, that's okay. I don't need to see who you are for this. Okay, that's fine then. But if you're going to try and, you know, impose it, then that's different. Now, let me be clear. This individual did not impose it at all. Uh, there, there was no malice or, or ill will at all in the consultation. Uh, we broke bulk amicably. On a friendly note, they, with the balance of honor and grace, were like, yeah, you know, I respect your wishes. Um. And that was that. I mean, of course, you can't force someone to do something they don't want to do. That's trespass. Not going to happen. But it is possible to 
try to introduce logic to them. But as I said in a comment the other day in the comments field, um, you can lead someone to logic, but you can't force them to use it. And sometimes things just are what they are and there's no explanation for them. And I'm okay with that. Um, I'm a very curious person by, by extension. That's why I'm doing this podcast right now about this topic because it's very puzzling to me. I'm a very logical-minded individual. If you, the viewer or listener, have any suggestions or guesses or opinions, keep in mind, I'm asking for your opinion. There is no right or wrong answer as to why this individual refused to turn on their video, especially if they want to learn this grammar then feel free to share. I'll definitely, uh, even if you want to email it to me, that's fine if you don't want to put it out in the public. Or if you want to leave me a comment in the comments field giving your opinion, but you don't want other people to see it, that's fine. Just write the comment and then in the, at the end of the comment say, please don't publish this. Because every single comment that is uh, made on my YouTube channel has to be approved by me. No comment gets published unless I approve it. So you can do that too. You can leave a comment and just say, Jason, please don't publish this. I just wanted you to know this. And then I won't publish it, but I'll be able to read it. I appreciate that too, if that makes you feel better. Uh, other than that, it's just uh, a very curious situation. On the whole, internet security to me is a joke. Now, I have friends that are really, really into computers and they're very proficient in the technology and security and things like that. And they're usually sending me suggestions to do this or that to improve the security of my computer of my operating system. But I've never really been a tech guy. No more than I need to be, really. And as far as security goes, of course I would be very sad if all of my videos and everything disappeared tomorrow. But I don't see it happening. I mean, I've never had a security breach, really. I've never had any problems with any of those types of things. Nothing that I couldn't handle. And this individual with the consultation just kind of is a throwback to or or reminiscent of those QAnon type of people who wear the masks, masks, don't credential themselves uh, and just go out there and say whatever and never have to stand behind what they say or show their face to back up their claims. Well, I mean, personality-wise, I'm not saying that this person reminds me of that, but I'm saying it's reminiscent of that type of mentality of not showing your face for whatever reason. Like, there's still people out there that do that. You, they use nom de guerres on the internet. They won't use their real name, their correct name. They won't put their picture up there. And how can anyone have any type of credibility when you do that? I just don't see it. Like if you if you're a live life claimant, you must credential yourself. You must have three witnesses, three other live life claim witnesses. You must have a physical picture of yourself on there and DNA to prove your claim of being a live life claimant. No one's just going to take you. Like someone once put in a comment. Why do I need witnesses? I, I'm my own authority. I can, you know, certify that I'm a fact. I don't need witnesses. Well, okay. That may be okay for you. Sure, you're a fact to yourself. You're a live life claimant for yourself. But once you start uh, contracting with other contract parties, that's not going to fly. That's not good enough. You have to have a continuance of the evidence to prove what you, who and what you are. 
in order for people to take you seriously. Unless you just want people to just believe whatever comes out of your mouth with no certification. I mean, think about it. I mean, yeah, the world would be a beautiful, wonderful place if no one was malicious, if no one lied, and everyone was straight up, told the truth, and that was it. Then you could literally take everyone at their word with no problems, with no qualms. Trust would be abundant, 100% everywhere. Think of how beautiful the world would be. Sorry to burst the bubble, though. That is not the earth we live on. It is not. Nowhere even close. In order, if you're going to make a claim and have it have standing with anyone else other than yourself, you have to be able to certify it. You have to be able to credential it. Your word is not enough to credential a claim. Unless you've done so much, uh, I don't know, perform so many performances that are public record that people can take your word for it. Like, uh, let's take the, the guitar player, Edward Van Halen, who passed away not too long ago. If he, and I know who he is, if he would come to me and say, I am one of the world's greatest guitar players and the most innovative guitar players. I could literally take his word for it because he has such an enormous body of work and performances that, yeah, okay, yeah, buddy, I take your word for it, man. You don't got to tell me twice. I don't need David Lee Roth to tell me what a great guitar player you are. I don't need Sammy Hagar to tell me that. I don't need Michael Anthony or Alex Van Halen to tell me what a great guitar player you are. I just, I know, I can look it up on YouTube and find it for myself. Or he could just pick up his guitar and start playing and boom, 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 there it is. Wow, yeah, no doubt. You're a great guitar player, one of the world's best. For me, you know, making a claim of authority of correct sentence structure, meaning uh, that I'm an authoritative grammar tutor, well, I am also the authority of over 400 videos on my YouTube channel. 400 videos that I created, I authored, I am the authority of. Having to do with correct sentence structure, communication, parse, syntax, grammar. If I walk up to somebody on the street and I say, I'm a grammar tutor, I teach correct sentence structure, communication, parse, syntax, grammar, and they say, prove it, bam, I can prove it on the spot. Don't care. We'll do it every single time. Or if I don't have time to do that, I can just shoot them a link. Here, go to www.youtube.com forward slash Jason Matthew Glass. That'll prove my claim. So the point I'm trying to make is you must have evidence for a claim one way or the other. If you're going to make a claim and it's going to have standing and you're the authority, the author of that claim, and you're holding a position, you have to credential yourself. You have to. You got these people. I mean, if, if you want to come into this domain, that is something that you must do. And I'm not just referring to the consultation because that is part of my terms and conditions, but I'm talking about this grammar in and of itself. Like I see a lot of channels out there with people claiming to teach this, but they don't show their face. They don't even give their name. And yet people will quote this stuff, chapter and verse, as if it means something when it doesn't mean anything because the individual hasn't credentialed themselves. Whether it's correct or not correct, it's always going to be suspect because there's not correct credentialing. And by correct credentialing, I mean you really know that someone really stands behind what they're claiming if they're willing to put themselves out there fully on the geometric level playing field in the light with correct name, correct visual correct credentialing, and a, a venue for contact information and so on and so forth. All the steps you would take, then that means, hey, looks like this person is, as they say, on the level. 
Because if you don't, then you're not on the level. And then it's either take it or leave it. And in the case of this consultation, I had to leave it because they would not comply with my terms and conditions. And it's just a very interesting scenario. And again, if you want to leave your thoughts in the comments, I definitely would like to read them. And uh, thank you for joining me for this edition. If you want to learn correct sentence structure, communication, parse, syntax, grammar, you can study my YouTube channel. Again, over 400 videos. If you want to support the channel, you can hit the join button. There are two tiers. The first tier is for people who just want to show their appreciation for the thousands of hours that I've invested in bringing this knowledge to the public for free. The second tier is for loyalists and contributors, and they get access to exclusive content, exclusive videos not available to the public, exclusive polls and posts and things like that. Also to the public, I would highly recommend keeping an eye on the community tab on my YouTube. There's a lot of good learning information there. And of course, if you want to fast track your learning, Contact me at jasonmatthewg17 at gmail.com and apply for a correct grammar workshop. Keep in mind, you have to have working audio and working video so that you and I can look at each other eye to eye, face to face, man to man or man to woman or whatever it is on the geometric level playing field of contract communication and we can vet each other. If you meet those terms and conditions, I'd be more than happy to set it up. So thank you very much, and I'll see you next time. Salute.